Greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Funke Alabi, representing the ministry Just Jesus Incorporated. How wonderful to be alive in the days that we live in and in the grace that we stand in. Let us pray. Our dearest Father and our only God, Today we bless you for another day in the land of the living. Today we honor the name of Jesus Christ, the name of our hope and our great expectation. Today we give blessing, we give ourselves, we give all that we have and all that we are into the hand of a living God, recognizing that we are the sheep of your pasture, and we are clay in the hands of a potter, that you mold us, that you have a design in mind for us, that you put us into creation with a purpose, and that that purpose must be fulfilled and will be fulfilled. So we bless the name of our, our Maker, our God and our Creator, we bless you that we are born of you, that we are your offspring, that you are our Father who is in heaven, that you have laid in store for our day each day. We're not accidental, that you have planned for our very lives and you have made preparations to fulfill every need. That's the confidence that we have. Every need for friendship and fellowship, for love, every need for health and strength and wisdom, every need for food and for shelter and for clothing, you have already laid aside. And we bless you, Father. We bless your glory. Out of your glorious riches right now, we begin to call in our needs for this day. We call in health into our physical bodies. We call in wisdom from the realms of the Spirit to take hold of our minds, to be able to do this day according to the will of our Father. We call in relationships, people that you have assigned for us to deal with, to meet with, conversations that are uh, reserved for, our, our, for, for us to engage in. For today, we call them in, in the name of Jesus Christ. We call in the freedom that you have provided when you provided blood to wash away our guilt. We call in freedom from every oppression of the enemy and every oppression of conscience. We call in the freedom that is available to sons of God to engulf your people, to transport your people, to propel your people into destiny. Even this hour, whatever hour it is that we uh, go through the listening of this video cast, let there be liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you said, where your truth is, you make men free. So we call for your liberty. We command the activation of the liberty of Jesus Christ in the lives of your people. Let us be broken free even now in our minds, in our understanding, in the way that we view where we are positioned in this world. Let there be a breaking out of limitation. For God of grace, you are not bound, neither limited, and you have set no limits on those who inherit you. But you have said all things are ours, whether life or death, the past, the future, all things are ours, and we are Christ's, and Christ is God. So we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that breaks the boundaries. We thank you, Lord God, that there is liberty this day. In Jesus' name, amen. There is liberty in Jesus. Outside of Christ, there is weeping. There is sorrow. There is confusion. People don't know which way to turn. People come to the ends of themselves and to the ends of their wits. They come to their wits' ends. They don't know how to maneuver from where they are to where they need to be. 
But in Christ, there is liberty. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 1. And verse 7. He said, Behold, he, he is coming with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. The Lord Jesus is going to come. He's going to come in the clouds. He's going to come from the sky down to the earth. And every eye will see him. Last video cast, I read from Revelation 22, and I want to go there again, where Jesus talks about his own coming. In verse 7, uh, I'm going to read from verse 7 to verse 13 of Revelation 22. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said unto me, See that you do not do it, because I am your fellow servant, and of your brothers the prophets, and of those who keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he, says, he said unto me, Do not seal the sayings of the prophecy of this book, because the time is soon. He that is unjust... Let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus says, I am Alpha and I am also Omega. I am the beginning and I am also the end. It all ends in Jesus. All. It all began in Jesus. Our lives began in Jesus. The life of every man, every soul, every human being began in Jesus. Creation, all the earth, the world, the heavens began in Jesus. The revelation of God, the word of God, he is the beginning. He's also the end. It will all end in Jesus. Cinema, Wall Street, riches or poverty, laughter or crying, great or small, all will end in Jesus. He is the source and he's the destiny. Everything is created for him and by him. He, as he's written here, is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Those who have died and gone ahead of us into eternity, the first who died find their, their, their um, existence in eternity, find their um, judgment 
in eternity at the hands of Jesus Christ. And those of us who are yet alive and those who will yet be born and who will yet live on this earth and die also will find our destiny and judgment at the hands of Jesus the Messiah. He is the first and he's the last, beginning and end of all things. And what has the one who started it all and who will close it all off? What does he have to say to our times now? He came into the world and he came to give us word, wisdom, the message of what life is all about. What does he say to the church, to those he has called to himself, to those who are listening to him? In, in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, I'm going to read from verse 44 to the end of Matthew chapter 24. These are the words of the Lord Jesus while he walked on the earth in human form. Verse 44 says, So you must, you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their proper food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hypocrisy is the language of human culture and civilization. <laughs> there is a scripture verse that says, let God be true and every man a liar. Every man is born, reared in this world with a tendency and a leaning and a bent to lie. And with that, we have built cultures and civilizations based upon lies, based upon not showing what's going on, really going on in your heart. We have built up language to hide the truth of what we're thinking about other people. <laughs> we have built up civilizations to portray things we don't actually believe or feel. We have morality that is hypocritical. It's just based on who gets caught where the guilt falls. And as long as I don't get caught, I am not guilty in the eyes of of society. So we have language such as we must not be seen to be doing this or that because it's all about 
what people see and getting caught. <laughs> and in every language and culture, there is great hypocrisy. And when Jesus came, what he confronted over and over again that resisted his grace and his spirit was hypocrisy. In these verses, this is what he decrees to us. If we are unfaithful to him, we are hypocrites. He is faithful. Everything that, that, that speaks of Jesus, whether they are religious, whether they're Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Zoroastrians, whether they are irreligious because they are humanists, secular humanists, modernists, postmodernists, whether they are history rec recordings and books or even futuristic studies uh, such as the movie The Matrix that speaks of the Messiah complex, everything that testifies of Jesus testifies to his faithfulness. Witches, witchcraft, occult, everything that testifies that has anything to speak of Jesus speaks of his faithfulness. His name is faithful and true. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. He is faithful. He's loyal. He's true. Therefore, in his own truth, he has said, as I read in Matthew 24, And verse uh, 44, be ready because the Son of Man will return when you're not expecting him. And he said, when he comes, he is going to judge his servants, whether they have been faithful or not. It is hypocrisy. To accept that Jesus is faithful, but he's not the judge of all mankind. Because he said he is. And if he is faithful, then he did not lie. If he is faithful, then he is going to return. He's coming back to this world. And when he returns, he's coming back to judge the actions and behavior and dealings humanity with humanity, and particularly humanity with his church, how people have dealt with sons of God. And to deny that, but to still say he's faithful, is to be a hypocrite. And he said that the, the, the destiny of a hypocrite is to be, I read, Matthew 24, verse 51, he shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with other hypocrites and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not a happy ending, being a hypocrite. He said he will cut him to pieces and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I invite us to embrace truth in the fullness of Jesus Christ. The truth of what he has said and the truth of who he is and the truth of standing with him, serving his people as he 
commanded. What did he say? Matthew 24, verse 45. Who is this faithful and wise servant whom the Lord has made master over his own household to give them their food at the right time? At the proper time. Everyone who is born of God has responsibility to the household of God because we are members of his body and there is no part of a body that has no responsibility. If we do not perform our responsibilities, we cause the whole body to suffer. It will be wise of us and we, for us to be faithful to the one who put us in the body with a function to, um, to carry out. It would be wise of us to spend our lives at this time following the Holy Spirit to carry out the functions of his will. There is timing to every purpose. The purpose of your birth in this world and my birth in this world has a, a, an appointment of time set to it. And things must be done in a timely manner. Our service to Jesus Christ must be done in a timely manner. Our service to one another as members of the body and of the church of Jesus Christ and as sons of God must be done in a timely manner. This is wisdom. Because we don't know the time of the inspection. The time will come when he will return to inspect our works. And at that time, we will not be able to turn the clock back to change anything. Verse 46 of Matthew 24, Jesus says, Blessed is that servant whom when his Lord returns shall find him so doing. He will make him ruler over all that he has. The position, the rewards of the Lord are rewards of dominion. The greater the dominion that one has, the less the frustration that attends that person's life. In this world, often we find ourselves reaching the end of ourselves. We find ourselves against a brick wall that just won't budge. We get frustrated, get angry. But the Lord has said, if we will faithfully serve what he has appointed our lives to serve to our fellows and to our um, to those who are of the church, the kingdom of God, whether it's the service in the spirit of faith, to use our faith to help others, whether it's the service of giving and generosity, to take off the excess that we have been able to gather, whether money or clothes or food, accommodation, and to, to share it with those who have not been able to gather that much in this life. Whether it's gifts of knowledge, of knowing how to manage things, wisdom, whether it's gifts of being able to perform miracles or heal sick people supernaturally with the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever gifts 
that the Lord has given us to serve the church with, whether they're gifts of preaching or teaching. And the gifts he has sent us into the world with, which is the gift of making disciples of all tribes and nations and tongues. As we serve him faithfully with these gifts, by serving one another, the Lord lifts limitation off of our lives. He expands the realm of dominion that we have. We enter into greater and greater realms of freedom. And at his return, he will distribute realms of dominion according to the faithfulness of his people. So I'll finish today's video cast by saying Revelation 22 verse 11 is a warning to us all. It says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And verse 12, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to according as his work shall be amen